ครับฟาบลิสเซกอเมนอบงักบันออสโนนัสฟาบลัสเอนีและฉันเป็นลูกสาวของสามลูกชายสามสาวและสองสาวโอเคไปต่อไปถึงปี2018ปี2018ฉันเป็นลูกสาวของสามลูกชายThe normal knocking of door, no me, no you stuff. I was in Abuja then. I was serving. Okay, um, after my service here, yeah, yeah. I was in Abuja then, uh, then trying to get job. So I got the news. I was happy. She told me, ah, say get ready, you, you're my chief bridesmaid, and your friends too have their own as she be. I was already telling my friends, people should get ready, get your money ready. I should be done set. So after the um the whole thing they went and they went back to Port Harcourt. I stayed in Abuja, no job. It was close to Easter. I said, okay, let me go back home and eat at least, Mama. Thank you. And my rent then in Abuja was supposed to um to expire in September. I went back for the Easter holiday. After the Easter groove, I fell sick, a malaria and typhoid. I got treated like uh, for a week or more. After the immediately after my treatment, my sister too got ill. The one that went to the village, she also got ill. And I was like, ah, okay, for me to you, okay, malaria. We all thought it's malaria. Though she went for tests, was malaria and typhoid. Had they treating malaria and typhoid? Days, weeks, it was still the same thing. No improvement. Had they losing weight? And all that. Ah, this thing is getting out of hand. Let's go to the hospital. We went to uh, one of our friend works in a lab. We went to the lab. Said it's shortage of blood. Me normally, I'm scared of injection. Anything needed, I'm scared. They tested my blood. I'm O positive. Everything was clear. She and she begged me to donate blood. When they brought out the needle, ah, size was too big. I started crying. <laughs> she begged me that she just try and do it for us so that she would get better. And because of the love I had for her, we shared so many things together. We shared our clothes together, our shoes, hair. We sleep on the same bed. I said, okay, she's my best. Uh, she was my best friend. So I brought out my hand and uh, started um, collecting my blood. After then. After which they transfused to her, so I was like, "Okay, at least you're going to get better." But it was as if the blood didn't even add up. She went on getting dry. My other sister in Lagos said and said to me, "Okay, take her to Uniport Teaching Hospital, so that at least they'll do a proper diagnosis on her." Said, "Okay." The next morning, we went to uh, to uh, Uniport Teaching Hospital. The stress going to all these teaching hospitals is something else. But notwithstanding, our fiance was with us, Sha. Notwithstanding, we went there. At that same point, his mom too was still in in the same hospital. Went there, they ran all the tests and everything. They said we should come back. It was on a Thursday. They said the next day was public holiday till on Monday, that we should come back the next Tuesday for the results. And this person is not really; she's not getting better. You don't just expect us to just stay at home and wait for the result. Meanwhile, this result we can get it the next day or even that day. We pleaded with them, but they all refused. So we came back home. So um, a family friend told us about one hospital in Aquaibom State that they don't observe um, a public holiday that we should try there. The next morning, my mom told me, "Okay, that I should take her with me with the lady." We went to Aquaibom State. We went to the hospital. Though before we got to Aquaibom State, it was late, so we waited till the next day, which was 
on a Friday, I'll be Saturday, went to the hospital. We met with the doctor, they, they ran tests. They'll tell me, take this document, take this, um, this test results with your sister down to the next building. I took her there. And seriously, looking at her every day, it got me thinking, because I watched my sister disappearing before my eyes. The way she was looking, no doubt you would think it was HIV. When we went to that block, the way she was looking, she was coughing, and the nurses were like, ah, you people should shift one corner, shift, shift, shift. What are you people doing here? Shift. I was like, ah, now we brought this, uh, this test for you. She said, eh, you people should just go, 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 before you give us what you're carrying. I looked at them. I said, wow, are you serious? So I overheard them speaking my dialect. I was like, only God knows where she went to, that she's like this. And even that one that is even gumming body with her. <laughs> she doesn't know if this, this thing will enter her body. I was like, are you serious? This nurses, after everything, we, uh, the test result came out. Um, she was HIV negative, uh, tuberculosis negative, hepatitis negative. I was like, then what is wrong with my sister? It was still typhoid and malaria. So uh, my mom came back, and my mom came to Aquaibon to meet us because they thought I wouldn't be able to take care of her alone. She came back to Aquaibon to meet us. And they still transfused um, blood to her, yet it was still getting worse. And notwithstanding, we went to different churches for prayers and everything that needed to be done, but yet it got worse as the day go by. She doesn't sleep at night. She doesn't keep food in her stomach. She throws up at every little opportunity, not even food, not even water. She throws up like greenish substance from her body. Churches and prayers, they said, oh, it's from the village, it's from your father's side and all that. What did you put do to them and all that? Initially, I don't believe that village people can do such, but when it happened to my sister, I was like, wow, these village people, they really will cause this was someone that worked in the house of the Lord. She was the chorus, the music director in our family church. And one of those nights, I heard her in my sleep. I heard her crying and singing some of Messi Chinwo's song. She cried and was like crying to God, praying, say, God, where did I ever go wrong? Haven't I served you enough? All the years in your sanctuary and you choose to pay me this way. At that moment, I couldn't sleep. I woke up and was trying to calm her down. She said, no, that I should leave her. Let her cry. If this is the way God wants her to win. I said, no, you don't have to speak negative about this, your health issue. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Fast forward, we went back to Port Harcourt. A pastor told us not to take her to the house. That we should just go to one church and stay. We went to one church. But she was insisting that she wants to go home. That how can she just stay in this church? No television, no family members to stay around her. That she wants to go back home. So my mom said, okay, let's take her back to the house. We took her back home. She told me that night she wanted ice cream and meat pie. I went to a fast food to get her ice cream and meat pie. But she couldn't eat it. She just took small of the ice cream and left and kept it. So the next morning, they were preparing to take her to another hospital. Yeah. And I was trying to feed her because my mom asked me to feed her so she can. At least when we, and when we get to the hospital, she'll be able to take... Um, injection or any kind of treatment. I was uh, feeding her tea and bread, and she told me that she doesn't want. I tried forcing her. She just have to take this, eat. I know it's not easy, but just try. And she said she's tired. That seriously, that watching us suffer like this because of her, is heartbreaking. That she's tired. She needs to go and rest. At that moment, I called my mom. My mom was inside the room. I called her out. Come and hear what favor is saying. My mom said, no, that you want all our hard work to be in vain, all the sleepless nights. You want it to be in vain. She said, no, that she can't take the pain, that the pain is too much. For, for two months, she has been in pain. Sleepless night, couldn't eat, couldn't go to the toilet and everything. So that moment, my other brother called and I told him what she said. I gave her the phone. She couldn't even hold her phone. Whenever someone calls, calls her phone, 
I'm always the one to pick her call because her phone was becoming too heavy for her. She was getting dry as the day goes by. Her colors was becoming fainty and all that. So my mom and one of my other sister traveled with her. to then went with her to another hospital. They were like, if they can get her to toilet. We even went as far as getting native for her so she can maybe try to poo because her body... As in her system was just on hold at that moment to get her to, to, to pull. So um, after some hours, I was worried. I called my elder sister that went to the hospital with them. I said, what's up? Now, how is she? She said, mm, she's fine, by God's grace. I got a call from one of my friends. We were just gisting. I was walking on the road. I remember I, I hit my leg against the stone like three consecutive times on that phone call. I even told my friend, ah, I don't understand why I'm hitting my leg. Ah, okay, maybe I'm not watching the road. Maybe it's because of this call. Let's talk later. I didn't know it was that moment my sister gave up. So and later that night, my mom came back with my elder sister. I got up from the bed, went to open the door for them. I was expecting to see her behind or maybe... To hear the news that she's in the hospital. I asked my mom, where is Favor? Where is Nikki? Where is Nikki? She said, I shouldn't worry, that I should be fine, I should be strong. That we lost her. <laughs> but my only consolation is that she's resting in the bosom of the Lord because she served in his vein yeah, tirelessly. <laughs> yeah, I think that is that will be all. Thank you. Oh.